if we put our citizens at the center of the development process, if they're the ones who are saying this is the priority, then we will be most effective. The Transition Authority is only here to manage the transition for three years and therefore we are very privileged and happy to be associated with the coming into being of this model. One of the requirements of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was that it would ensure devolution of power and services. This requirement emanated out of a legacy of centralization of access to services and resources that resulted in the marginalization of large segments of the population. It is also rooted in the understanding that when citizens are placed at the center of decision making, they're best able to address their own development needs. Communities are best placed to understand and say what direction we need to take in order to have our development processes work effectively. And that's the whole idea. If we put our citizens at the center of the development process, if they're the ones who are saying this is the priority, then we will be most effective. Good governance and the respect for human rights are the cornerstone for the foundation of successful devolution. The scheme was conceptualized as a rating scheme, as a rating system with the key criteria based on Article 10 of the Constitution and its key features such as uh, combating tribalism, enhancing equality, and developing political and physical power to the counties. As part of its mandate, the Transition Authority is concerned with promoting human rights, good governance, inclusivity, and ensuring that there is no marginalization during the transition period and even after. This means promoting accountability, transparency, and equity in the distribution of resources and opportunities. These ideals are shared by both the TA and the Kenya Human Rights Commission, especially on the twin issues of promoting good governance and human rights for sustainable development. That's where Cyprian was coming from. We believe there cannot be sustainable development unless there is human rights. This model, or the model, aims at determining which county is performing better than the, other, than the other on the implementation of the Constitution as it relates to the use of devolution as a tool for improving citizen participation in decision and budget making. This tool is a measure of improved access to rights and the tangible results in terms of development. Some of the questions that we ask under public participation and access to, in, and access to information, I'm sorry, is, is there a policy on public participation? Um, has the CEC developed a freedom of information policy? Is there a freedom of information legislation? Where and how is public information announced? Are there medium used for announcement easily accessible? and are there opportunities in each public meeting not only for leaders to speak but also to listen to the people. So here we are looking at um, are there frameworks within counties uh, in which um, both the people can talk as well as the leadership can talk and are the two listening to each other and are people participating in a meaningful manner. The evolution we believe will, so, will also create opportunities for historically marginalized communities and regions to improve their standards of living through efficient use of resources, an example being the Equalization Fund. We are therefore keen on supporting governance at the county levels by working with the county structures through infusing human rights principles and standards. KNHCR at the moment is working closely with counties as stakeholders with greater influence in promotion and protection of human rights 
and indeed we are giving priority to economic and social cultural rights. The beauty of the Kenyan constitution is in the devolution and for me whatever we do as a country devolution must work. Devolution, we like it or not, it must work because that is the best we are going to get our inclusion right from the resources that are available to building the capacities of every Kenyan to understand the framework. And that's why for me, the formal equality is one thing we all must protect. And I think we need to give it time. We have our teething problems. We need to give devolution time. And where we sit, like for the National Gender and Equality Commission, the first thing we did is we interacted with the counties. We have developed a guideline for inclusion, and I believe everyone in the county has seen a copy. And what we tried to do in a very, very simplified way was to guide everybody at the county in terms of inclusion. If we helped each other to understand where we are coming from, where we are, and where we want to be as a nation that is all inclusive, we will strengthen the inclusivity principles within the Constitution. As we do the awards, I would want to uh, say, let's get down and let's have even specific awards coming out for those outstanding counties that have included more than even the 5% for disability and maybe 10% of the marginalized and the numbers will grow. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to launch the award criteria and I must allow the TA, the, the Kenya Human Rights Commission, for its leadership in developing this program. This program will go a long way in ensuring that the aspirations of the people of Kenya will be achieved and in end achieve sustainable development for the future generations. The challenge really is not so much in terms of assessment and um, we have many tools that we can assess uh, our progress but the problem is really that the assessments do not lead to behavioral change. They do not lead to new forms of performance um, and that is here and there is where the problem really lies. So I think what we need to look at as well in terms of the assessment um, tool is actually how does this lead to more skillful policy dialogues around performance and how could we track year upon year um, how our performance as counties is improving and therefore be able to explain to the electorate that actually we are deserving of their taxes and we are deserving of their mandate and the legitimacy that they bestow on us. This project aims to ensure that the devolved system of governance entrenches access of human rights in service uh, delivery. I applaud the efforts of the Kenya Human Rights Commission and the transition authority in developing a framework for engaging and awarding counties on access to human rights and service delivery. This is a progressive initiative that will go a long way in informing county governments on areas that they need improvement and change with respect provision of basic rights. The new constitutional dispensation aims to inculcate values and principles, among others, of democracy, human dignity, equity, and inclusiveness in all public institutions at both the national and county levels. In addition, another laudable milestone of the Constitution 2030 is devolution. At Article 174, of the same, the objects of devolution of government include to foster national unity by recognizing diversity, to recognize the right of communities to manage their own affairs and to further their development, to protect and promote the interests and rights of minorities and marginalized communities, to promote social and economic development and the provision of proximate, easily accessible services throughout Kenya and to ensure equitable sharing of national and local resources throughout the country. In fulfilling these objectives, and as, as they perform their functions as stipulated in the fourth schedule, county governments have the duty to ensure that the rights of their citizens are respected.
the, the, the ten point model has uh, ten parameters that we seek to assess and under each of those ten parameters there are key questions that we will be looking to evaluate. So uh, the, the, the winner will be announced based on how they, they score on each of those um, key questions. The awards will be done every year uh, in the month of May. A tool like this helps the counties to carry out a common approach or to have a common approach to implementation of the of devolution and particularly on um, leadership and governance from my side i feel that this to, after this launch today it will help us it will help us as the network as the community not to penetrate no more but to walk into the process there are people who came in with that mentality of the past, of the other regime, of the, of the other era that was there. So they, they don't actually understand about the, the, the essence of devolution. So to some extent, it's like we are still at a stage that requires a lot of education, even within the, the leadership fraternity. What we are doing, we are organizing on how we can be able to start monitoring the projects which are, are being initiated by the county government so that we can be able to assess in terms of the, the impact and the financial reasonability of those projects. So our vision is to continue to engage the county government and not to, 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 to leave the issue, of the, 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 the issue of good governance and accountability to the political elite. The 10 points uh, looks at uh, how services are supposed to be delivered when you look at uh, public participation and access to information, for resources to reach down to the grassroots, to the marginalized and the poor at the county, there has to be an aspect of participation and aspect of access to information. You cannot participate without having been informed. Many of the fundamental services that counties are responsible for delivering are in fact uh, coherent with human rights, the right to food, the right to water, the right to health, the right to education, uh, the right to equality, access to justice. Many of these things have now become county responsibilities and so counties as I said are really at the forefront of ensuring that their populations have access to these services in the quality that they deserve uh, that they're easily accessible, that they're accessible to all segments of the population, um, to ensure that those counties and all citizens can contribute to county development going forward. We are hoping that having heard about this, that they will take this document, look at it, and look at the tool, and most importantly, critique and use it. We are hoping that um, it contributes to um, a tool to being a tool that our, our partners at the community level, our Huronet partners and our civil society partners can popularize and share and use. And so we're hoping that um, probably in about another year or two's time we will be able to say that using this tool we've seen county, because we have monitoring and evaluation as one of the tools, so we've seen some of the counties that were represented here today taking the tool and using some of these measures and we can say that whereas there was they had started at position x in another year or two they can actually say that they've reached position that they've, that they've improved and enhanced the delivery of services and respect for human rights in the in those counties